Hey there. Are you ready for another round? <laughs> we'll keep this one short. That last video we just did, I think we went about an hour. What? So welcome, welcome if you are a replay viewer and welcome if you're just hopping on. If you're a replay viewer, please type replay. If you are new to watching my videos, please type new. If you are a regular viewer, please drop your favorite heart emoji down below because you know I'm all about the love. Okay, so we're talking about the number one thing that will destroy your business. And I'm pretty sure you're probably already aware of what that might be. And in fact, I would like to see any guesses. Go ahead and drop a comment below. What do you think is the number one thing that can destroy a business? I am curious. What is the number one thing that you believe can destroy a business? Because uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to let this little snake in the door, okay? So this is something that I have uh, consciously made a decision to not allow to be part of my business. And I'll be honest, it's easy to allow it because it just seems, um, I hate using the old excuse, oh, it's human nature. But it it, it is in, in a sense because people are, we are relationship driven, right? We want to be included. We want to be part of something. And so what happens is sometimes commiserating, gossip, drama, talking about others, negativity, whatever. That is a form of relating. Like so some people feel like they are connected to others if they participate in those things, right? Have any of you ever had that awareness that you we're doing that to feel connected to other people. I know I, yeah, I'll totally raise my hand. It's something that I think I've learned in my family and um, <clears throat> it's not good, right? So it's something that I had to make a decision. And luckily when I was in my first year in business, um, with Lavelle, I made the decision that I was going to be very conscious in how I show up and how I think, how I talk. And I was going to be, always having the meeting in the mirror, like looking in the mirror and saying, what am I doing in my business that holds me back, but I'm trying to place the blame on other people. Like I had made a decision at that point to take ownership in my business and to be empowered, right? To not place blame on others or on the economy or whatever. Um, but really take ownership, really show up and be the CEO of my business. So how is a CEO going to act, right? If business is failing, a CEO does something and changes something. They don't blame somebody. So you're an entrepreneur. Are you? Comment, comment. I am an entrepreneur. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you are just the CEO of your own life, <laughs> right? That's true too. We are culturally conditioned to think like employees though. So it's very easy for us to talk about other people or situations and to place blame, I think, in this culture. <clears throat> so I believe that to, to make this decision today that you really could create prosperity in 2018 because you have now decided, decided to be empowered, right? Rather than to be drifting about and letting all of these different things happen to you, you're now creating the life that you desire rather than just seeing what happens. Because just seeing what happens isn't a lot of fun, really, is it? So we're going to cover two things. One is gossip and one is listening. Um, the first thing we're talking about is gossip, and I do have my notes here. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and you can type the comments. You can type them in your journal. You can come back, watch the replay, and write it in your journal. Make sure you click the subscribe or follow button. I don't know what you see at the end of the video. But <clears throat> I want you to think about this. Gossip will lead to rapid destruction of your business. So I'm going to teach you how to identify it and where you're participating in it. I'm also going to ask you some questions to help you identify how to destroy gossip that may have taken root in your life or in your network, <clears throat> in your business. So first, first question, write this down. Some people might want to just type the questions for me in the comments and then people can come back later and write them out in their journal. How's that sound? Good? Thumbs up? Okay. So first question is, is it easy to talk behind someone's back when they are close by? Is it easy to talk behind someone's back when they are close by? Why or why not? Is it easy to talk about or to talk behind someone's back when they are close by? Why or why not? Okay. 
Then the second question is, do you have a tendency to talk about others when they are not around? Why? Hey, Suzanne, we're writing out these questions to help us identify the number one, what, number one thing I believe can destroy a business is gossip. Okay. So the first question was, was it easy to talk? Is it easy to talk behind someone's back when they are close by? Why or why not? And number two is, do you have a tendency to talk about others when they are not around and why? Number three is when your spouse, kids, customer, <laughs> coworkers, uh, promoters in your network, hear you participating in gossip, how do you think they view you? What are you teaching them? How much confidence would they have in you? Okay, think about, think about that one. When your spouse, kids, customers, promoters, etc., etc., hear you participating in gossip, how do you think they view you? What are you teaching them? How much confidence would they have in you? And I would also add, what seeds are you planting, right? Remember, everything, our words are seeds. Everything we say, we can speak into existence. So your words are seeds. What seeds are you planting? Now, number four, this is a good one. You ready? Have you been involved in gossip lately? What damage was done? What can you do to repair it? Have you been involved in gossip lately? What damage was done? What can you do to repair it? Yep. <laughs> Number five is a really good one. How much value does participating in gossip add to your fortune or your future? How much value does participating in gossip add to your fortune or your future? How much value does it add? Of course, we all know it's not a value add. It's poisoning your well. If you are a leader in network marketing involved in gossip about any leadership in your organization, upline or downline, you are poisoning your own well. It will directly affect your paycheck. We've seen it happen again and again and again because people fall prey to this unless they consciously decide not to. They draw their line in the sand and stake the, and, and plant their flag and say, I'm not going to be part of gossip. Okay. Now, here's the thing. When confronted with rumors of dissension, how will you react? Because people will talk about you behind your back. As a leader, I also believe that this is how the enemy can get at you, is by so-and-so talking about you behind your back. Well, guess what? If people are coming to you and saying, so-and-so is talking about you behind your back, you tell that go-between person that if so-and-so wants to talk about me behind my back, I don't need you to tell me about it because that doesn't serve anyone, okay? Tell that person, no more, don't tell me about this. Instead, say to that person, I invite you not to participate in those conversations about me. Instead, have those people talk to me directly, okay? Because you're not helping them to build their business or their future by talking about me, right? And you're not helping me or yourself either by coming and telling me about it, okay? So just hit the nail on the head. Just say, hello, not available for that. And remember, if you're living your life by one of my favorite phrases, which is, I'm no longer available for anything less than awesome, then clearly having people talk about you or coming to you and say, so-and-so is talking about you, because if you're a leader, they will do that. You will just simply say, nope, I don't want to hear about it from you. You can tell those people if they need to talk about me behind my back and they need something solved, come to me. Let's figure it out, right? Otherwise, I'm going to go talk to the people that want to build a business. I don't have time for that, right? I don't have time for anybody's crazy. Because I am building a life of freedom and my future depends on me showing up in my business every single day and not getting derailed by what some other people are talking about. Hello, put the fire hose on it, okay? You guys with me on that? So that's how you react. What do you find most challenging about handling and confronting dissension? What do you find most challenging about confronting this stuff? I'll tell you what, I... It puts a pit in my stomach. It makes my heart race. My, my stomach hurts. You know, my hands get sweaty when I have to confront these things. As a leader, that's part of my job description, right? I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I have to face these things. I can't just sweep them under the rug. Here's what I know. If we sweep stuff under the rug emotionally, eventually physically in our body, it will react, okay? So for me, I 
face things head on. I'll take a quick moment, deep breath. I will pray real quick about it. God, give me the perfect words. Let me face the situation. Exhale and take care of it. Pick up the phone and call, right? Call. It works. Um, okay. So here is a partial list of how we tend to fail other people in our lives. And I want you to write down in your journal or in the comments, whichever you choose, um, describe a recent failure on your part that um, you have fallen short in your life and failed other people around you, okay? So not keeping secrets or breaking promises or not defending a loved one, not forgiving, talking about somebody behind their back, not being honest, unrealistic expectations, criticizing, judging, or other. If you have another um, thing that you've done recently, maybe some lies or situation you may have been part of that was not, uh, it was failing other people, right? I want you to be honest with yourself because when we can confront these and <clears throat> correct them and bless, release, ask for forgiveness, forgive others, we can walk into 2018 with a clear heart and mind ready to prosper, okay? So go ahead and type it in the comments. Where have you failed others? Maybe not keeping someone's secret, breaking promises, talking about somebody behind their back, not defending a loved one, not forgiving not being honest, unrealistic expectations, criticizing or judging, okay? So think about where it was that you have failed other people. Identify it. Now, how can you correct it? How can you correct it? How can you make it right? How can you ask for the forgiveness? Pray about it. Bless that person. Bless the situation. Ask God to bless you, okay? Ask God to release you from this because this is part of that root of bitterness, we talked about it on the other video just a moment ago. Um, this root of bitterness, when it takes, heart, takes hold in your heart and your soul, it will keep you from the success that you desire in 2018. It will keep you from that prosperity. So let's do this today. Um, make sure that you identify any of these areas where you have fallen short in how you have failed people in your life. Make the decision to correct it. We, we left, I just shared with you some ideas on how you can correct it and correct it so that you can go into 2018 doing your best, right? Serving other people and holding yourself to the highest ethical standard. And we all know what that means, right? Yeah. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. D treat other people the very best way. Hopefully the way that you treat your family. But a lot of people don't treat their family very good. So maybe you need to start there. Or maybe you don't treat yourself very good. Maybe you need to start there. Wherever it is that you need to start, just start. Make the decision that today's your day. Moving forward, you have drawn your line in the sand and you're going to grow, okay? So real quickly then, as we go into the next topic, which is listening, are you a good listener? Okay, so your questions are this. You can type them in the comments. Number one is, how, did it, how does it feel to be listened to? How do you feel when someone listens to you? Hi. <laughs> oh, it's locked. How does it feel to be listened to? All right, so how does it feel to be listened to? And then how does it feel to not be listened to? How does it feel to not be listened to? Um, number three, do you think that by listening to others, you can find what their motivation is? What motivates that person? I'll give you a hint. One thing that, a couple things that motivate people is love, connection, and feeling good. 
<laughs> so if you talk to people and you ask them questions using the form acronym, ask questions about family, occupation, recreation, before you deliver your message, right? This is rapport building. Um, you can do, you can ask people, it doesn't matter how close you are to somebody. You ask them about family or stuff going on in their family or how is their business or their job or what do they love doing, their hobbies, recreation, you're gonna build rapport. People will feel listened to by you. Um, <clears throat> so, and that honestly helps a ton when you're out and about and sharing about your business or you're connecting with your prospects, right? Is listening, asking a few questions to get to the heart of it. Like, um, it's very helpful. Okay, so. Do you think that through listening, this could help you motivate people? Do you think through listening, this could help you motivate people, whether it's motivate them to buy or motivate them to build their business if they're part of your team, right? Because all the time, we have people around us that we need to motivate, right? Like if you're a parent, motivating your kid. So how many questions are you actually asking your kids? Or if, if it's your coworkers or something, like asking questions will help motivate others because it's when you have people listening um, and they feel like you listen to them, it's like a magnet. They actually want to be with you more, right? And they trust you more. So what impact would developing the skill of listening have on parenting, marriage, and business relationships? Answer that in the questions. What impact will developing the skill of listening have on parenting, marriage, and business relationships? And how do you think it will impact that? Okay, and then again, our final question is, who do you need to make things right with? Who are you not listening to? And who might not feel heard in your life? I remember when I first started this exercise, it was my kids. I had to go and have a conversation. Literally, I went to them and asked for their forgiveness for not listening to them enough. Like always being too busy. Oh, I'm almost done with this. Oh, I got this call. Oh, da, 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 right? Like too busy all the time. And I would tell myself, I don't have time to talk to my kids right now because I'm too busy and I got to build this business. So we got to get out of debt. Da, 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 da. But the truth was, they don't understand that on a child level. Kids are programmed for unconditional love, right? So I decided I went to them directly and I just asked for their forgiveness. And I said, I haven't been listening to you. And I'm going to do a better job at that. And I actually scheduled listening time on my calendar. <laughs> and guess what? It's so worth it. Because that might sound crazy that a mom would schedule listening to her kids on her calendar. But if you're not doing it, hello, you need to schedule the time. Right? To get in the habit. So that's what I did. And it's been beautiful. Um, so I, I want you all to consider this. People blossom when you give them the time and space to share and connect with you. They will bloom before your eyes, whether they are people on your team, your customers, your kids, your friends, it doesn't matter. People will blossom when you give them the time and space to share and connect with you and you listen, okay? And it's not in a commiserating, complaining way, but you're just listening and you're asking some questions and they're sharing and you know, it's just so powerful to do that for people. All right, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Go ahead and drop a comment if you have, and I will come and visit with you all very, very soon on another live video. Don't forget to click subscribe or follow. I don't know what it is at the end of these videos. Do you guys know so I can share that in the future? <laughs> and what did you take away from today's video? Did you learn something new about gossip or about listening? Was it helpful? Okay, I would love to invite you to take some time today to really connect in your planner with what it is that you're gonna do in 2018 and decide what is the daily method of operation, your job description, you're building your business, you're the CEO of your business, you're an entrepreneur, you're an empowered thinker, you don't place blame, you don't gossip at the water cooler, <laughs> and what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Sound good? All right, we'll talk to y'all soon. Take care.